Hello guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Milos and I'm a creator of original maps which are regularly posted on Instagram and Twitter. In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about spike maps and how to make spike maps using R. Population density maps are usually made through polygons, circles, lines or some other symbols by increasing the size of these features in width in order to show population size. But with spike maps, we basically map uh, population size uh, into elevation. The higher the population, the higher the spike. Now, um, spike maps are pretty, pretty popular these days and my Twitter feed is replete with uh, different maps and I myself were, was not really immune to this trend. So I created a lot of different maps, uh, population density maps, forest height, elevation maps using spike maps and thanks to Tyler Morgan Wall, the creator of Ray Shader package uh, it's really easy it's really straightforward to make pretty awesome spike maps in R so in today's tutorial we'll be using the contour population data set and I'm going to show you how you can create a population spike map of any country in the world let's roll so in this tutorial we'll be using the contour population data set I learned about this data source during the 30-day map challenge on Twitter when many people were making really awesome population density maps using this data source. So I checked their website and what really struck me here was how just fine-grained this data was. It's built on hexagons with population count at 400 meters resolution. Um, Second, what really struck me was how many different data sources is triangulating. The first one is the global human settlement layer, which is based on sensor data. Then it is overlaid with Facebook data. And finally, it uses also Microsoft and New Zealand and Copernicus global land services. As a cherry on top, it also uses OpenStreetMap data in those instances where either Facebook or other sources were not sufficient. Apart from fine-grained information and the multitude of sources on which this dataset is built, I find the use cases of the Contour Population Database pretty fascinating. If you scroll down this web page, you will find that the Contour Population Dataset was used to solve some communal issues, such as, for example, environmental challenges or protecting citizens from fire. So I highly recommend this product. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, we will use the contour population dataset on the country level because I want to show you how to make some pretty and informative spike maps of any country in the world. Of course, it's also possible to download the global population data in different uh, resolutions, but it's going to be way, way easier to do that on the country level because the size of the file will be also smaller. So we access the available country level population data through per country subsets of country population data set. And then a new window opens up with a list of all available data sets on the country level. So if we, for example, scroll down and select Germany, we will get uh, the file of population count for Germany with the downlink on the right hand side and the file name on the left hand side now i also checked the links for other countries and they all follow a general pattern so they're all the same in terms of their name except for this two letters this de in the case of germany so this is an iso2 code now i will show you in a bit how to download this file in r but by just changing these two letters you can download the file for any country in the world which is available in this data set. So we will then click right on this download button and copy link address, which we will next use in R to download the data. We are back in R and ready to start our adventure by loading the necessary packages. But before we do that, I highly, highly encourage you to uh, install the ray shader and its accompanying ray render package if you don't have them if you have them also i encourage you to update them using this highlighting links 
The reason for that is sometimes what happens is that if the package is not updated, it can throw an error in the middle of uh, the rendering, which then can slow the process. Once you do that, we can load the packages we need uh, for this session. The first one is a well-known culprit tidyverse, which we use for data cleanup. In this tutorial, we'll be using our utils package to uh, unzip the archived uh, contour data. HTTR, we will use to send a request to the server to fetch uh, the contour data set. SF package is used to load the data into R in terms of the shapefile. STARS is uh, used to create a raster image out of this shapefile. And finally, the ray shader will we be using to create the spike map of Germany. In our first step, we want to download and unzip the data. In order to do that, we create a URL object and then we paste that contour link that we copied when we went to the website. Now, if you want for any other country, it's quite easy. So you just need to find the ISO2 code. And then instead of DE here, which is ISO2 code for Germany, you put any other country. Uh, and then you can proceed. The second thing is uh, we will define a constant, which is file name. This is how we want this file to be downloaded. The name under which is going to go. So it's going to be Germany population. Uh, keep in mind that this is the G, uh, G package. So this is the uh, extension of this file. And finally, it's GZ. So it's actually archived. Um, so what we do is we simply then define a function uh, which will take this data. Uh, using HTTR, uh, we get uh, the data from the URL and then rewrite to disk in the file name that we specified. It's really, really important that you put this extension that you can also find at the end of the link in order for this file to be downloaded properly. And of course, you can uh, define or not the progress. Now, once we get this uh, request, what we need to do next is we need to unzip this file. And to do that, you cannot simply use the R unzip function because it's in a specific GZ format. So I Googled a bit, I didn't know myself the answer, and I found this nice package, Gunzip, which comes from R utils. So you simply need to uh, put the file name here and say not to remove the file after it's unzipped. So uh, after we do that, we simply call this function and the file will be downloaded and unzipped to our hard drive. One good thing about the SF package is that it can load not only the shapefile format, but also this G package format. So what we want to do next is we want to use that file name that we created, but we want to remove the GZ and dots so that it's only the name of the file and with the extension of G package. So what we do here, we create a new uh, file, load file name, and then we simply tell R using the GSUB function to get rid of this dot GZ. And then in the next step, we define uh, the projection that we want to transform this file into. And uh, previously we used the WGS84, which is a standard one. In this case, we're going to use the Lambert projection, which is used for uh, Europe. And then we define a get population data function, which is going to uh, read a G package file from our drive using this load file name, and then it's going to transform everything uh, into a Lambert projection. Let's inspect the first few rows of this new object. Uh, what we first see when we call pop underscore SF is that uh, it has certain coordinates. It's in the Lambert projection and it has three fields. One is H3, which is the unique identifier for a hexagon field. The second one is population count, and the third one is geom for geometry, which is in this case a polygon with a certain coordinates in the Lambert projection. So this is what we get when we just make a plot of the object that we just loaded. And as you can see, uh, there's a lot of uh, hexagon fields here uh, with a certain population count. But what we cannot really understand from this map is how big are certain areas. So this is where the spike map will come in handy. In order to create a spike map of Germany population, 
we need to first transform this Germany shapefile into a raster. Rasters are images of a certain resolution and they are composed of cells with a certain pixel value. To make a proper raster image of Germany, we need to get also the proper dimensions. And the only way we can get dimensions for our perspective raster are from the Germany shapefile. Now, to get uh, the dimensions of the Germany shapefile, we have to create a bounding box, the bounding box of this Germany. What the bounding box will give us then are four values. It's going to give us the minimum and maximum longitudinal values, which is denoted as X min and X max. And it's going to give us the minimum and maximum latitudinal values, which are denoted with Y min and Y max. Let's take one step back and understand what is the bounding box here and why are we using it uh, the way we are using and what do we want to achieve by creating this bounding box and how do we want to get the width and the height values in order to build this raster. So first of all, imagine that this a rectangle, that this is our bounding box. Now the bounding box has its width which is usually uh, denoted with X and has its height, which is usually denoted by Y. So you can also understand that Y we use for longitude, which is essentially width, Y we use X and Y for height, which is latitude. Essentially, we use a Y. Uh, the second thing is every width and every height is constructed of two points, right? So in order to construct also our width and height for the raster, we also need to define uh, two points for the width and height respective. So starting with width, uh, it starts with this point here, which is uh, the lowest value for both the width and the height. In, or, in other words, it's uh, zero and it's a zero for, uh, it's a minimum uh, longitudinal, it's a minimum latitude value. But, the second value for the width is because it moves on this uh, x coordinate, it becomes the maximum value and it, when it reaches the limit of it. But because the height doesn't change, we still have the same minimum value. So in other words, uh, in order to extract the width, we need these four values. So for the starting point of the width, we need uh, the minimum longitudinal value and the, uh, the minimum latitudinal value. And for the second point of the width, we need the maximum longitudinal value and the minimum latitudinal value. So if in the case of the width, the Y value didn't change, it was constant, while the X value changed from the minimum to maximum, in order to get height, we need the reverse situation where the X value doesn't change, it's always minimum, it's constant, but the Y value changes from the minimum to the maximum. So in order to extract uh, height, we will need four values. So we will need the minimum uh, X value and uh, minimum Y value. And then we will also need the minimum X value and the maximum Y value. Going back to our case, we will define height and width. And for each of them, we need four points, as we said before. And we will use the st distance function from the SF package to calculate the distances uh, between these points in order to get the height and the width. Now, once we do that, we want to make sure that the width and the height are not simply absolute numbers. So we don't want distances in kilometers. We want a ratio. We want a ratio between the height and the width. We will use that ratio to build any size of the raster, any resolution. And here is how. We will first do a condition here. So if the height is greater than a width, let's use a constant of one for height ratio. And then for the width ratio, we will just divide the width by height. But if it's reverse, if the width is greater than a height, then we will assign the constant value of one to the width ratio. And for the height ratio, we will uh, divide the height by width. And then in the last step, we get those ratios. So when we inspect the width ratio, we get the value of 0.74. And then we get the height ratio of 1. 
So that means, as we expected, that Germany, in a way, is taller than it's wider. So that makes totally sense. Now, if we want a certain resolution of this raster image, we need to define then the size that we want to use and then apply these ratios in order to get a proper uh, ratio between the width and the height of a selected country, in this case, German. So we defined here the size of 3000. So we want a resolution which is at least 3000 on the height part. You can go wild here, you can select a higher one if you want. But what is important is that once we do that, we want to uh, apply, as I said, the width ratio to the size. We do that by multiplying the size and the width ratio. And the same we do also for the height. We multiply the size and the height ratio. And of course, we round these numbers. Uh, if you don't round these numbers, then you won't be able in the next step to actually create the raster file uh, out from the shape file. And once we have applied the height and the width ratio and calculated width and the height of our raster image, we notice that the height is 3K and the width is 2.2K. Uh, so uh, we are finally ready to create a raster out of this shape file. And for that, we use a stars package and in specifics, the ST rasterize uh, function which is going to simply create an image out of this shape file. Now, what is very important here is we need a two dimensions. The one is the shape of uh, this, this whole file. So this will be the geometry. In our case, it's called geom. And the second one is what are going to be the cell values. So for that, we need the population column from the shape file. So we select them. And then we also define the width and the height of this raster file. So after creating the raster file, we simply inspect it by plotting it. And this is what we get. Now, don't get confused with the color because in the previous one, you saw that the uh, map of Germany was basically black. It was crowded. Uh, here, it's simply about the color scale here. A uh, lighter colors uh, present uh, more population while uh, darker values, they present uh, fewer population. Ray shader works with matrices, which you can get by just uh, transforming the image into a matrix. But uh, in our case, we use stars package to create the image. So we first need to uh, transform this uh, object into either a Terra or raster object. These are just uh, two packages for dealing with images. In this uh, case, we just uh, transform it into a raster and then there is a convenient a function from ray shader, which is uh, raster to matrix, which uh, simply converts this image into a matrix. And we are almost ready to make our spike map of German population. But before doing that, we first need to define the colors that we'll be using for our map. And uh, here I want to show you how I actually create color palettes in general. I go to this uh, website, which is actually hosting a chroma.js uh, package. It's a tool for uh, creating uh, colorblind safe uh, palettes. And uh, what I do is I simply just uh, take some sample of uh, hex codes. I insert them here. And then uh, here, if it's uh, check marks that it's safe to use, then I use it. You can, of course, check how it looks for uh, colorblind people as well uh, and uh, most importantly is here if you increase the number of colors you can also see that this is still colorblind safe back in R we define our hex code values and then we create a texture by creating even more colors based on it and guys we are finally ready to make this spike map using ray shader I'm very excited about it and uh, using ray shader we need two functions the first one is height shade which uses texture as an input this one is simply going to create the surface on which we are going to be working and it's going to paint the surface but the next function which is called plot 3d is uh, going to exaggerate the surface and create spikes based on the data that you provide a must here to define is the height map which uh, takes values from uh, the matrix that we created. And then there are a couple of other arguments here. 
Um, the solid one is basically whether you are going to create only the surface or you're going to create also some other uh, features. And then the solid depth is how deep is going to be the surface. For now, we just uh, turn these off. You can also play with, with these options, maybe turn them on and then try to increase or decrease. Um, the Z scale is one of the most important. It's basically the ratio between X and Y and a Z on the other uh, side. Uh, in short, if you decrease the Z scale, basically you are going to exaggerate the spikes. They're going to be higher. If you place a Z scale at a higher value, they're going to be less exaggerated. So they're going to be lower on your map. There's also an uh, opportunity to uh, include shadows. So we have here shadow um, shadows and shadow depth is how deep is going to be the shadow. For now, I just uh, again uh, turned off this one, but you can try it out. Shadow darkness is what happens when you, you cast lights on your scene and how strong is going to be the shadow in the background. Here, uh, the value is between uh, zero and one. Zero means that uh, there is a very, very strong shadow in the background of your spikes. And one means there is uh, no shadow in the background of the spike. Here, we choose something closer to one, but we still want to show uh, the shadow. The reason why I choose a very high value is that uh, sometimes a shadow can overshadow, right? Uh, the spikes and the scene. And uh, especially if you have a lot of spikes, like we have in this case, then it can uh, create uh, something that is not really intelligible at all. For the window size, you simply um, define how big is going to be this, uh, this render. So because this is just a snapshot, we choose a very uh, small size and we are not going to use width and height here because they are pretty, pretty uh, high. So we just use 800 by 800. Um, you can use some other value as well. Now comes the part where it's about how the actual surface is going to look like. The five value is uh, simply how much is this uh, spike map going to be tilted, right? So the higher you put, the, the less tilted it's going to be. It's going to have a more uh, a, a proper look as if it's not a 3D and uh, vice versa if it's lower then it's going to be highly tilted zoom as its uh, name suggests is simply zooming in how much you want to zoom in uh, the map and here what's uh, quite important is that if you increase the the size here of the zoom then it zooms out and if you decrease it zooms in maybe it's not so easy to uh, remember but as you practice as you do this more often you will remember that the theta value is how much is rotated here so uh, this one is a bit difficult to understand until you try it so that's why i put a bit of an odd here value for theta so, so they can see how it looks like when you rotate it a bit and finally the background is white uh, again you can play here with different colors and different um, color values and see what works for you but for the simplicity of this tutorial we just take white so this is the snapshot of the spike map. Uh, here you can see that the palette is applied successfully uh, and also some parts which are highly inhabited, like for example, Berlin in the north, uh, east or uh, Munich in the south. But what you can also see is that the map is rotated as I warned you with choosing that weird minus 30 theta value. The good thing is that this is still the scene part. So we still did not render this image and saved it as an output. So you can actually play with this one easily and you can readjust the map as you want. In order to do that, we apply the render camera function from Ray Shader. And as you can see here, I changed uh, three things. First, I changed the file value. So if you put a uh, five value to 90, it's gonna be basically a flat uh, spike map with little visibility in terms of spikes. Second, I changed zoom. I actually uh, zoomed out a bit because in the previous one, you probably noticed there is in the Southwest, a certain chunk of Germany missing. So I want to see the whole map of Germany. And finally, I put theta to zero. 
So this is after we applied the render camera option. As you can see, uh, the map of Germany is now looks like a map of Germany because we put the theta back to uh, zero. Second, uh, because we changed the zoom and now we can see the complete map of Germany. And finally, it's uh, not so much tilted anymore because we increased the five so far we defined our scene and we set some of the basic parameters such as the uh, light the shadow but we still haven't rendered the object and exported it into a file to do that we use the render high quality function from ray shader which is um, used to create uh, not just the light but also to define the color of the light the direction the intensity and altitude to understand how our choices of light direction and altitude are going to impact uh, the rendered image i want to go back to the drawing board and show you how applying light at certain degree angles will produce a shadow in the actual scene so for example if we choose to apply light at the 30 degree angle what will happen on the scene is that you will have a shadow at 210 degrees so on the opposite side same for example if you apply uh, light at 300 degrees the shadow will appear here on 120. In our case, we will be applying at 225, so it's around here. Um, and then that means that somewhere here there will be a shadow. With the light direction argument, we set the position of the light and the resulting shadow. But with the light altitude argument, we set degree above the horizon that the light is located. So if we go to this example of the sun in different seasons and if we choose our light altitude to be at 60 degrees, then our source of the light will be somewhere, let's say here, and it will be casting the light from this altitude in a direction like this. We are ready to render the scene and to export it as a high quality image but before we do that let's just review the options we set after choosing the file name we also chose to show the preview that means that after we run this there will be another window opening up please do not close this window it's used to show you the progress of the rendering and if you close it the whole process will fail Next, we chose the light for our scene as well as light direction and altitude. You can uh, toy with this and choose some other values that you see fit. And we also chose light intensity, which is how strong the light in the scene will be. Uh, the default version is 500. I played a bit in other scenes and uh, if you go at 500 or higher, uh, the colors will be too light and you won't be able to discern the spikes. So I chose a bit lower one, but again, feel free to toy with this option. Then uh, interactive is set to false, which means that in the newly opened window, you won't be able to move it or reshape it. The reason why I did that is that oftentimes if you leave this option, then uh, the rendering might fail. And then finally, uh, we also define the width and the height options using the predefined values. And our spike map is finally ready. You can see the added shadow to this map, which gives a bit of a fullness to the spikes and shows even those spikes that are a bit smaller maybe on the map. Uh, of course, maybe you can also play a bit here with the lights, choose a bit higher value if you wanna really bring more light to the scene. Uh, also, you could choose a different uh, color uh, palettes and maybe a bit more contrasting colors but all in all uh, you can use this approach to uh, export to other geographic realms and that's all for today ladies and gentlemen in today's tutorial you learned how to import the contour population data set and create pretty spike maps using the ray shader package in R by tweaking a bit my codes in specific by changing the ASO2 code in the link 
You can also download this data and create your own spike maps for any country in the world. To do so, feel free to also check the full code down below, clone the repo and reproduce it, reuse it and modify as you see fit. Just plug in your ISO2 code and let it run it. Try out and let me know how it goes. I'd be happy to hear your view on how this map could be improved or extended to other geographic realms. To do so, please follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, and also feel free to support my work by buying me a coffee. See you next time.